All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to another feature film breakdown. Today we are looking at The Crown. And I should really pause and say that I did these breakdowns a few years ago and I was just getting used to the workflow and there are some issues with the final images as in they look a little bit crushed. Uh, you know, it's like a video to full transfer that happens inside Resolve if you pick the, the wrong color space to export out at. And so they look a little bit crushed, right? If you were to watch it on Netflix, maybe it doesn't look like that. That's only going to be for these next few, then I sort of figured it out. But even then, it's, it serves as a good opportunity to talk about what you should actually be looking at in these breakdowns. Right? We're trying to remove all of the normal distractions that are there for human beings, which you have learned over your entire life to focus all of your energy on when you see a scene, which is to look at the people to try and decipher what the emotions are and try and join up and collect as much information as quickly as you can to get up to speed with what's going on, right? That is your uh, evolutionarily, uh, that is what you would be looking for if you wanted to stay alive. So we're fighting against that in these breakdowns. We're trying to say, okay, well, what is, if we just look at the most basic version, say it was in black and white, say it was almost like the wireframes that you see in early VFX stuff, if you've ever seen that, where it's just the idea. We just want the bare essentials, because the bare essentials is where a lot of the people go wrong, including myself. So I want to set myself up for what is the light doing? What's the frames doing? What are the people inside of those frames actually doing? Not their faces, not uh, the story that's going on, but what are the basic essential building blocks that we need to be aware of? And then how we can manipulate those to get the best results in the least amount of time. So although the images may not look exactly like they look in the final show, I think it actually might serve our purposes better in this way uh, to understand exactly what's happening with the lighting. And in The Crown today, what we're going to be looking at specifically, because this is a excerpt from a much longer video, which is available to all the Patreon supporters of the show. Many thanks to those individuals that choose to support the show. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, so this little excerpt is on how one decision in where to put the camera is either going to make something incredibly complex or very, very simple. And for a cinematography like me, who's not that good, uh, any complexity increase is a decrease in the chances that I will actually be able to successfully pull it off, given the time, the resources, the budget, all of those things, uh, that all goes down with complexity. So really the whole point of constantly doing these breakdowns is to try and find efficiency gains, which uh, in the end results in more simple and simple setups, which allows myself to have reproducible results that I can continue to rely on looking at things like the framework and the other blocking things that we talk about in this little excerpt. So without further ado, let's have our little look at this scene from The Crown. Okay, so we play through this. This is, I mean, pretty cruisy. Number one, we're in the narrative world. So we're going to be able to play things significantly darker, right? And for longer periods of time. That's not to say you can't shoot, you know, you could shoot a commercial with these levels. These are not, there's nothing wrong with these levels at all, right? It looks nice, looks great. It's a good looking show. But, you, you know, let's be realistic. You're gonna have clients, you're gonna have people saying, this is too dark. Like we can't have Kmart. You know, this lady, maybe she wants to buy, uh, I don't know, a flower pot from Kmart and she's running down to pick it up from the mailman who's delivered it. Um, it's not gonna be this dark. But here, great things, if we're in the narrative world and we're thinking, how can we make this thing cool? Talk to the production designer, talk to the director. Which brings me back to my point about the edge of tomorrow, because there, every single step along the way, your job as a cinematographer, apart from making, okay, you make the good images, uh, but you're leading a, you're leading a production through the entire process. These people don't know anything about how to make good looking images. You know a little bit more than them. So that's why they hire you, right? And if you're really good, you know a lot more than them. So ideally, they're going to come to you with uh, problems and you're going to have solutions. And once you get really good, you're not even going to wait for them to come with problems because you already know the problems. So you're going to educate them and you're not going to do it in a dickhead way. You're not going to do it in a D-bag way. You're going to do it in a really nice way that makes them feel smarter and makes the whole project look better. Because when you do that, the whole project looks really good. Plus you're a nice person. That means you get more jobs, right? You don't want to be a D-bag about it. So you have to, some of these things, you know, a director might have a great idea or a producer might have an idea or they might have a location that works just perfect for the budget and for the days and they'll allow you to shoot there. But you know in the back of your mind it's going to look like shit. It's not going to work for the scene or you're going to have to change something around. You don't know who to go to. You know, maybe you're like, maybe I'll try, go to the director first and see if we can't change the whole scene around. But then you realize, well, the director's really stuck on this. And maybe he wouldn't mind or she wouldn't mind if I just took a little bit of budget away from day two and I put it into day one and we could change the location or we could get more time, whatever it is. You're the one leading that charge. 
So you have to, this is why I always say, take extensive notes on every single production because you will forget the little moves. Maybe you caught somebody and, you know, you had the advantage and then you lost it because you did something that didn't work out. I say, take extensive notes that allows you to be objective whether or not you failed. I mean, anybody can look back at a project, you're like, this looks great. We don't know what else this could have looked like, right? So just to, to keep those records and to always be aware that you are, not only are you leading the, the, the team on this particular project and answers will be looked at uh, or answers will be looked for from you, but also these, this, it doesn't stop here. These relationships grow over time and whatever angle that you take now, uh, that's going to affect future projects. It's going to affect future relationships. Uh, so just be, basically be ready and, and don't be a dickhead about it and just be looking for these things. So number one, I mean, this for narrative, yes, uh, I will take the beautiful staircase in the amazing location for lighting. I mean, how much is the cinematographer doing here? If you've got great looking locations, you've got the, all the technical equipment that you possibly could have uh, gathered, given the budget that you have, get the best of the best, right? That's what you do. You get the best of the best. On this show, I can't remember what they're shooting, some sort of Sony camera, right? But if it's me, I'm going, okay, uh, can we afford the Alexa? No, can't afford the Alexa. Okay, can we get a red? No, can't get a red. Well, then we just go down the list of where does the production stop? Okay, here. What other sacrifices do we have to make? If we can't get the camera that we want, can we get the light that we want? If we can't get the light that we want, maybe we can't shoot in a location this big. So you're just solving, you're just, you know, it's a list of things. There's a reason why I like to think about it like this, because it makes everything easier. You know, again, going back to the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu example, it's like, if you know, if you know one move, if you know the first step, okay, that's good. But if you skip the first step and you only know step two, well, you don't know what you've done wrong by the time you get to step three. You don't know, how did, how did I get here? Oh, it wasn't because you screwed up step one. It's be, step two, it's because you screwed up step one, right? And it all goes pear-shaped. So knowing these things and then being able to look at them, which is where the framework comes in handy. It's like, no, you don't have to follow it, but it's an easy to remember, an easy to identify roadmap for, am I moving in a positive direction towards the outcome that I want, which is good images. If I have a couple of these things, I know at least I'm in the ballpark. And I know when I'm on the tech scout, when I'm even before the tech scout, I know on the location scouts, I know when I see photos of places, what can I immediately start to filter out? What can I say? This isn't going to work. This is going to work. Uh, and that will just make you a better cinematographer. So from, you know, from a cinematography point of view, yes. Okay. You got to pick the lens that gives you the depth. You got to put the light through the window. You got to turn on your practical, but really all of the work is done. As soon as you say, this is a good spot. Let's let her walk down here and we'll be on the dolly and we'll pull back right? This is all you're doing. Keep her nice and wide. We got a little backlight back there. Okay. We don't really have to do anything else in here except for account for that light, right? This light is ours. This is a movie light. Yeah. Okay. We got to balance that level out there. We're going to follow the whole thing through. We also got to set the levels of the practicals, but this is pretty basic stuff, right? Then, okay. We transition to here. We lose the movie light. We have our practical put there, right? You need to know that the practical is going to be there so that you can fake it with the movie light here. Okay. And notice how that shadow changes, right? Significantly softer here. Then by the time we get here, it's now much smaller. Okay, we come down this hallway again. I mean, imagine this is white walls. This is a boring, terrible shot. It's the interest of the place that makes it halfway decent. But again, really, also really down. Like, don't be afraid. We don't need to fill it in. This is a series. We've already seen these people. We know the voices. The audio plays into it. You're setting up a world that is not boring. And okay. Like, how could you do this thing differently? How, how would you do this thing differently? Again, you could play those up a little bit more. You could come in with, if you're going to go like, I don't know, um, what's that Adam Arkapal one? The King, right? You want like a shaft of light that these people are walking through. You want more room tone. Well, if you want more room tone, what do you have to do? You got to either open up, right? Or you up the ISO to get more detail in the shadow, which means you would lower these levels. So if you want more room tone, lower the pracs. I mean, you can't lower that much more, right? That's on full lowness. But lower it up, then open up, and that, that way you get more in the shadows. As long as you don't see this window, you're not going to have a big blown out problem. We keep going. Here they come into the light. And we open up for them. And this is the hardest, the hardest, or not the hardest, the ugliest looking uh, shot in this entire sequence is this one. Why? Because we are looking into the corner of the room that has no lights. And it's a perfect example to say how you could easily screw this scene up. 
you could take what, I mean, this is a good looking scene, right? Like it will fit all of the parameters of the framework by the time we get through with it. But just imagine you didn't have good ideas and you weren't thinking on the tech scout or when you landed or on the blocking. And you said, you know what? Let's stick the queen here and the person she's going to have the conversation with here at this table. And then all these will be filled with the randos, right? The extras and everything will play out over here. Well, the problem is the window that is giving us our light is way over here. And say you make the second mistake of, well, let's be on this side of the line looking that way. Well, now we're looking into boring darkness. There's no light coming this way. I mean, it, it, there is light coming this way, but it's only a very, very little bit. So they're going to be dark. It's going to be down. We're going to have to, um, you know, open up on the lens or up the ISO or find some other way to get light on the sensor or we're going to have to carry from above and that's going to look like shit, right? Let's put them as close as we can to the lighting source. So we're going to leave these tables free. We're going to leave those seats free. That's going to be where the queen goes. Here we go. She comes into the light and we're not going to stuff this table out here and be on this side of the line and shoot them this way, right? We're going to shoot towards the light and also just the location. Okay. If we don't have this, if we don't have these windows here, how are we going to light this thing from above inside? Is it one of those historical things where you can't put in, um, widow makers above? What do we do? How do we get lighting in here? This one is easy. You blast all of the daylight in this way from the window that you can't see. Watch how you never see this window, right? You have to imagine that there's another one of these over there. This side of the window you never see and that's where all of the level is coming from. It's not coming from over here because you could then see the lamp in the background, right? We keep going. Boom. Now you can't see that window. And now we completely switch. You move the lamp, right? If you are doing lamp, if you're not going to do just natural day or you go over the top. You know, this is a, the, the old goalpost rig. You put your two uh, M90s up there. You blast them through here and you get, I mean, this is really, really contrasty. You don't even really have to do much with neg we, given the darkness of the surfaces. And if you're only putting out that ambient sky, if you're only pushing ambient through here, then you need even less neg, right? To separate those values. But again, we're on the right side of the line. We don't care. We're not going to fill her in. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to let it be natural. Again, works because we're on the back side. Scoop, scoop, nice and wide. Now this one, okay. We've set up our side of the line here. She's looking, looking that way back at them. She's going to sit and she's going to be the farthest person over. We follow him over here. She follows him with the eyes. Okay. Now this, you know, from this point forward, we've already won. We've set up our big light source. It's gigantic windows. It's big, it's soft, which means here, in a shot like this, we can take the liberty of making this as soft as we want, this shadow. And then if you want more room tone back here, you know how to get that too, right? You can either go from above, add room tone, which is harder. Not harder in the sense that it's harder to set up, but it's harder to make look good. Because the more lights that you add inside, the more opportunities that you have to screw it up. And you don't want to screw it up. You want to make it as easy and as simple as possible. So if you can, get the biggest light that you can, put it outside, shine it inside, make it as soft as you can. Don't soften from the outside, right? Because it's going to take forever. Soften from the inside. And when I say that, you, you don't need to really soften here. Okay. Maybe you decide, where is it? This. Okay. We're going to put, let's put, uh, let's just say, well, we're not going to go with the gold post option. Let's say we go with a single M90, right? Which this is a big room, single M90. We're going to bounce it into a 12 by of ultra bounce, and then it's going to push in right? That severely limits the level when you bounce versus pushing in. I mean, or you could push, right? The same exact thing. You could push through a four by frame, then through a 12 by frame. That gives us this level of softness. Obviously, the bigger you make it, the better it's going to look. Uh, just remember the bigger that you make it, also the more neg you're going to need, right? Because it's going to go everywhere inside of this room and you want to suck up all of that light to maintain these ratios, to maintain this darkness throughout this show. So as soon as you do that, okay, that's that shot there right? We've got the M90 out there. Now in here, now if, because we have to reach into the room more, right? Like here, you know, they're right next to the source. They're right at the window here. As we go inside the room more, we need more reach. So maybe we, uh, if we're pushing the M90 through a four by and then a 12 by, maybe we take the four by away and then we put a something smaller inside the room, right? And what allows, what you can do when you put diffusion inside of the room, okay, I get it. It's a pain in the ass for talent because they got diffusion frames everywhere, but then you can diffuse 
her versus the background, and you can do it with one light. It's like when you diffuse the sun on a sun wrap. You can diffuse the sun on a sun wrap with a highlight for the edge of somebody to soften it off, and then you can bounce from the sun too. You do the same thing inside. But you can only really do this technique if you get really big lights, right? You want the biggest lights that you can possibly afford. All right, that is going to do it for our look at the crown. As you can see, it's like one decision. Do you, do you decide to go on the light side or on the dark side? If you decide to go on the light side, be prepared for either flatter results or if you're trying to create some shape, it's going to take a lot more of a grip jungle, many more obstacles on set. It's just going to be a difficult ask to have that shape. And maybe you might be able to do it for one shot. You might be able to do it for two shots. But as that schedule starts to explode, as you start to build these grip jungles around individual shots, you're going to find it's really, really difficult. And eventually, uh, if you're like me, you're going to give up and just shoot it flat. And then the next time you're going to know that that probably isn't the best choice to uh, shoot from the light side of the room. Okay, hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, and yeah, if you are interested in seeing the rest of this uh, video, the rest of the breakdown on the crown and new ones every single week for the past however many years it has been. Uh, please do think about joining the Patreon group. I appreciate it very much. The link is in the description below. Okay, that is going to do it for us. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.